So we just kind of let it run just for a couple of seconds. I'll sit down and we can get started. Sounds good. All right. Well, welcome to the parlor of the Presbyterian Church. I have two friends with me here today, and they're going to introduce themselves and talk with us a little bit about their relationship, in particular being big brother and big sister uh, relationship together. My name is Joanna Rhodes. My name is Shariah Dunn. And we have been um, matched with Big Brothers Big Sisters Crawford County um, just for actually shy two months of 11 years. She was seven years old. Mm -hmm. And how has it gone? Well, I think it's gone great. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking to Shariah a little while ago. Um, what, what are some of the things that um, stands out in your mind? How has this relationship uh, helped you? Help me be a better adult, like become an adult. Okay. And uh, what kind of mother I want to be when I grow up oh. and have kids. Okay. Okay. So you got the chance to see Joanna be mother to yeah. her kids. Okay. How about the family? Did you get a chance to, to be with the family at all? Yeah. Um, they made me feel like I actually belong here. And... Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. So, so this has been a family thing for for you guys, then, Joanna. Yeah, from the beginning. If um, if we were gonna be hanging out together, the kids obviously they just had to be there. Ethan was nine months old when she um, when we got matched, so paired up, and so she has seen them all come along. And um, birthdays, we usually she'd be around, or we'd be around for hers. And the holidays, we do stuff together. I know even a couple of years ago we did some stuff, um, Day of Kindness, and she went up along with us mm -hmm. um, out into the community to do some um, nice things. And mm -hmm. it, uh, sang Christmas carols at Ron's. Christmas carols at the store, yes. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, a lot of times we talk about big brother, big sister, and you know, as you know, people talk about not having time. You know, people are very busy. So what do you say to that? I like to do this, but I don't have time. Time's obviously relative to all of us, but um, sure, I just came along with us with whatever we did. I and mean, you know, if we were going to be going out shopping and she needed to do school shopping too, you know, I would just take her school shopping along with our school shopping. Or um, if we were going to be doing stuff active in the community, you know, we wanted to get together, well, let's go and do this. And what we did, she did right along with us. Um, and if we were going to go to a movies, we'd call her up and say, hey, you want to go to the movies, swimming. You know, we just included her in the stuff that we were already doing, so we didn't, um, it never felt like we were having to find extra time. Um, she was just there. Yeah. Shariah, how was this for you? Um, obviously, you were living with your grandmother when the match was made. And now you get to see um, different kind of family relationship. we got little kids. We've got mom, we've got dad, and how was this for you being there? I mean, um, for, to be part of that, that kind of different environment, what did that do for you? Um. Did you draw a blank? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she can be a little shy sometimes. Yeah, it's all right. It's okay. So what we are hoping to do is just to, to show how uh, this relationship can work. Um, Joanna, can you tell us a little bit about what difference this relationship has made for you? You, could, you didn't have to do this. So what, what difference has it made for you to have poured yourself out like this? Well, I wanted to get more involved in the community and to I wasn't quite sure how to do that. And so when I got involved, um, it, it helped to see a different um, part of life, a part of living. Um, you know, I grew up with both parents and, you know, both my parents had their parents. And um, so seeing Shirai being raised by her grandma was a different experience for me. And a lot of my, just even growing up, my friends all were raised by their parents. And um, so there was just a lot of difference in the way um, she lived that were different than what Drew and I were, you know, providing for our kids and what the way we both grew up. And um, I wanted to be able to uh, 
continued to give and to give to her and Shelba, whether it was um, time for Shelba to be able just to blow off steam to talk to me about struggles that her and Shariah were having or Shariah to have that other adult um, person to also um, blow off steam to talk to about that she felt comfortable and to give that um, that relationship that for her to know that there is somebody out there that no matter what cares for her and I'm not failing, um, that there's other people there for her. Yeah. And I, for me, the big thing is that, that you don't have to. You know, there's a sense in which family just kind of is family, right? And so when, when your mother says good job, you say, well, I don't really believe that because mom is supposed to say good job. But when somebody who doesn't have to say good job says good job, well, that all of a sudden means something. So here is somebody who didn't have to care for you, who comes along and cares for you. And all of a sudden you think, wow, you know, there must be a good reason for somebody to do that. So I'm thinking of your kids, Joanna. Um, has this uh, given them kind of a different view of what they might have had if they hadn't gotten to meet Sarah at all? For them, I think it's just normal. Yeah. It's just a natural thing. Um, you know, I know when Ethan was younger, and probably really before Zadie realized, uh, there was times if our plans changed with Shariah, they would be very upset and disappointed. <laughs> okay, they just kind of look forward you to it. You know, I mean, they did. They just looked forward to it. It was like, okay, we're going to see Shariah. And then if it changed last minute, because as she was becoming a teenager, as teenagers do, <laughs> they change their minds on when they want to do things. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, you know, I had I had to set limits and expectations for Shariah as our time, you know, our 10 years went along too, because... I wanted her to know that I expected certain stuff out of her. We were going to have a relationship. Um, you know, we're friends, we're family. I care for her. She's a role model for well, our you're kids. Your kids, right? You know, she's around my kids, and I expect certain things from them. So she needed to know that I expected that from her too, yeah. and I still expect that from her. Um, <laughs> and now we talk about that even now with stuff, and um, you know, because I know she has potential, and I want her to know that she can do what she really wants to do if she puts her mind, you know, Good. set to it, and. She needs to hear that. So I heard that there were at least 60 children in our community on waiting lists, uh, waiting for somebody to step up and say, I'll be a big for, for one of these littles, or my family will be a big for one of these littles. Shariah, would you say something uh, uh, to our friends about why anybody should bother? Um, they help. Big, big sisters can help you, well, they can guide you in the right direction and help you become a good person and just show you things that you've never known or learned before. Just help you yeah. learn new things. Cool. Do you want to be have any final words? A, a family match is a great way to get um, matched up with another kid in the community. It's if it's already stuff, you know, for 4th of July or just different activities, Little Balkans Day, things like that that's going on in the community, just going to the park or going to a movie. There's different things that you can do with a, another child that as a family, you don't have to feel like you have to separate your time when you already are separated. Um, and that's just a big, that's a big deal, a big difference on um, if it's an individual one-on-one -on -one mentor match or if it's a family um, match is... It's not in addition to what you're already doing. It's it's just a part of you. Well, thank you so very much. Uh, it occurs to me that in being willing to uh, open yourself up to this relationship, it's uh, in my in my way of thinking a very practical way of actually giving thanks, giving thanks for where you are, giving thanks for what you have, by being willing to become an avenue through which somebody else will receive. It's it's very powerful. And now you get to pass that on to whoever comes along next. So thank you very much for being here and for, you. for sharing your story with us. All right. Thanks. And cut. I need to record her when she is, doesn't know she's.